Uh, next one here is uh, what I was just starting before with uh, Luke. Luke reached out and says, I saw your video on how to can two tall parts. That was last Sunday. If you had a part that was too tall for your uh, CNC machine, how you could go ahead and machine that one, break it down. And um, and and that was also Friday's short video, I think. Um, and Luke is asking, I've always wanted to CNC a spoon, for example, but I'm not sure how I could do that with the software because I got to flip the, the work pieces around. Yes. Um, I do have, if we go back to the list here, I do have one of the live streams. If we go down to, let's see, I thought it was in the, I'm not sure which one it was. I just had it before. Well, I didn't have a sound. Uh, 76, if you go and search live stream number 76, if you put in last live in 76, this video should show up. That is probably the long version that you're looking for, Luke. Um, I'm gonna give you the short version here, but funny enough, you're saying that you want a spoon and I don't wanna do cam uh, through all of these, but, so we're gonna do that now, we're gonna model up a spoon. But if you really wanna know, um, my intro to sculpting number 48 is an intro to sculpting and there I'm doing a spoon a lot more in detail than what we're gonna do and we're gonna do here. So let me show you, Luke. Let me show you first how you model up a spoon inside of inside of Fusion, and then I'll just show you how you can machine both sides on it. Okay, let's do this 10 minutes or less. So to use sculpting, um, go ahead and click the create form up here. That will let you get into the to the sculpting workspace. And what I normally do is I'm using the the plane. Click on that. And just like um, just like in when you're sketching normally inside of Fusion, you gotta select the plane and we're gonna use a sketch. So I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle here. I'm gonna make it about, I don't know, my spoon's gonna be about 200 millimeters long and hit the tab key and maybe 35 millimeters wide. So that's kind of like the boundary of our spoon here. Hit okay. And it gives you, gives you this blanket. Think about this as a blanket and we're now just gonna pull in it. We're gonna pull left, we're gonna pull right um, and, uh, and, and things should be Things should be all good here. Um, a couple of, of tricks you want to know to do this. I like to use this one up here called symmetry whenever I can. And symmetry is literally like a little mirror, mirror across the whole thing. It just makes it a little bit easier in the sculpt environment if you can. So I'm going to click mirror and I select one face and I select the other face and then it creates a green line through the center. And that green line through the center is um, is what uh, it will it will kind of mirror across. We're gonna hit okay to that, so we have that green line there. Now the other tool, so the mirror is the I use the blanket, and the, the plane blanket, and the symmetry to go across. And the other one you probably want to know about is the insert edge. So you can see right now we kind of like have four. Uh, we have the blanket broken down into four sections. If you say insert an edge right here, and you click on this edge here, then it will let you insert more edges. So if I just place it maybe around here and hit okay, you will see we just broke it down into more sections because what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pull on those sections. And the easiest way to do that is right click out in space, hit edit form, get this dialog. And there's a lot in this dialog, don't worry too much about that. Now you can select either a face, you can select an a line, or you can select a ver vertex, or it's, it's, yeah, like a, it's a center here. If I left click on that, you get this dialog box. And now if I grab one of the arrows and I start pulling down, see what I'm doing? I'm literally pulling in that blanket. It's like I'm pulling at that point, like I'm grabbing the blanket, I'm just pulling, and everything is staying fluent to that. So you will see we're kind of like wherever you're pulling, everything is kind of like following that, that shape down. So that's really, really handy. And what you can do is you can pull down, you can kind of like pull it up and down, whatever you feel like is a good number. We can go over, we can click on this point over here and the triangle moving over there. And you, again, you saw me just pulling up and down in, in these arrows, you can do that. You can of course also pull uh, on the arrows the other way. And then you have like these, um, you have like all these different handles in here. So if I go to the top view, 
you can grab on this square and you can kind of like just pulling it's almost like just dragging that corner so now we can kind of like start adding that kind of spoon shape to that maybe and and the 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 thing that's going to make things looks good here is how much time you're spending on playing around with these finesse so if i think that this edge is a little sharp Maybe if I go up and insert another edge and select like that edge, so now we get another edge right there. When I hit OK, that was kind of like, that will pull in everything. So then maybe I, I right click edit form, go back to here, and then maybe I try to pull this back a little bit and maybe select this and try to see if I can pull that back a little bit. Is there any way I can kind of shape that? So you can, you can spend hours in here uh, kind of adjusting and finding, fine tuning what you want. So up here, maybe here is where I want kind of like the, the spoon to narrow down. So we can do that. We can do that there, right? So we can kind of narrow that spoon down. Maybe I select the upper end up here and pull that a little closer. So this is really where, where you get to, to kind of, you can just sit here and play. And this is what's going to make this is what's gonna make your your item uh, really really good um, in here. Now another thing I want to show you about put moving this triad around. So if I'm looking from this from the side, you will see my spoon is very flat, but I really want kind of like the handle to to have a little bit of a curve to it. So you might be tempted to just go in here and select on this intersection right there, and you could start pulling up, but that will kind of like pull that face up there just control z to undo that um you could also go ahead and select the face right and then if we go ahead and do the same thing again we start pulling up that does give us um a, more of what i'm looking for but one of the things to know is that wherever this triad is is where it's going to pull from so when i'm pulling in this face right now here i'm pulling from that point but you can actually move this triad. So though that I still have this face selected, I can go down and click right here, click on this one, and then I can place this triad wherever I think I want. So maybe I just hit this line here and pull it around something. Maybe I want to pull from there, just a little green check mark to hit OK. And then if I pull up now, I maybe get more pull here than, 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 than over here. So again, this whole thing about pulling and dragging with the right click edit form, that is what is going to make your shape look good or bad. So I would probably still spend a little bit more time on, you know, this, this corner here. There's all different kinds of options. I have done a bunch of, uh, of live streams on this, uh, inserting more edges or whatever you, whatever you need. Now, um, this is just a blanket though. So we got to add some thickness to it. And for that, you go to the modify and use thicken. This was actually a uh, this was actually a, a YouTube comment um, earlier this week. So the thicken command will put thickness to this one. So we can add like a one millimeter. Hit OK, and now we are getting uh, thickness to to the spoon. Now the cool thing about this is that when we hit finish form, this is actually now a full solid body in here. Uh, so we don't, we didn't use any dimensions to it, uh, but you can at any point going in and right click and hit edit down in the timeline. And then you're back in here again, hit edit form and we can select something and we can, you know, we can start pulling and, and adjusting things, uh, adjusting things again. All right. So that's how you can work modeling up a spoon, model up a better spoon than me here, will you? All right, let's get to Luke's question here. And that is um, how to, to cam it. And that is actually not that complicated. Um, there's different ways you can do it. The easiest one is to go into manufacturing and uh, you always gotta create a setup. And this setup here is actually maybe pretty good. Uh, I normally use the select Z box here if you ever watch any of my cam ones. And uh, let's just select, I like to select a plane and then probably set your Z wherever you want your Z. Because when you're setting the Z here, Luke, this is where our G54 is going to be on our machine, right? So when we select that and we hit OK, this is now our first operation. So let's throw a couple of tool paths on it. I'm going to select the 3D Adaptive. I'm going to select a tool. 
and I don't know what will work in here. 10 millimeter and mill probably work. And I'm just going to hit OK and see what the tool is going to give me. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about um, stock and finishes. That's another that's another question, another day. But if we go in here and simulate this, turn the stock on, um, we will see that we kind of like will rough this down here. Rough, 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 rough. Rough out the spoon. So that was our roughing tool path. And for a finishing tool path for this, I would probably, I really like the parallel tool path. As an old mold maker, anytime you're getting into 3D, start with the parallel. It normally will give you something to start with. Let's select another tool. This is going to be a ball end mill. Um, let's select a six millimeter three millimeter I don't know three millimeter and uh, let's go over we're not gonna do anything here let's go over to the passes tab where we select the step over and I normally will always start my step over out at a half a millimeter that's where I normally would start let's just hit okay again and see what we get I don't I don't for free access toolpath I don't change too much out of the gate and this is a looks like a pretty damn beautiful toolpath out of the gate I would say if anybody cared what I think, um, that looks pretty good. All right, so here's your question, uh, Luke, about machining the second side. The, so it depends on what you're doing, but you could, if you're just making one of these and, and work how to hold on to it, if we're not gonna attack how you're gonna hold on to it, but just looking out of the code, then you will post this out right now. So you have setup number one, you can right click and you can let's say post process and you can select whatever post you're using. I have the step craft, so the UC and C and C is what I use for that. Um, but to machine the second side, flipping it over, literally just go and set a new setup. Now you're gonna go through the same thing as you did before. So we're gonna go and select a plane, I'm gonna select that plane, and then we're just gonna flip the Z axis, right? And then stock point is going to be that point because that is now our new 54. Maybe you change this one to 55 out of the control. And now you can do the exact same thing. We can go in here and say a new operation. Let's select the 10 in the middle like this and hit OK. And that's going to rough out uh, the backside here. And then you could literally probably go in and, and finishing in this case with the same tool. But this makes it make makes it look very easy uh i know uh, but uh this is literally a, about as simple as you can do this in here now of course if you wanted to to show um jumping between you know maybe you had operation one in one vice and operation two in a second vice watch that other live stream that i talked about earlier and that will show that but literally in this case here if we simulate both setups um, we have the first setup. It's gonna rough the rough the pot out, right? Then it's going to do the parallel cuts, and now when it's done with that, it's gonna flip it over, and it's gonna do the exact same thing. Now using your second setup, and then it's going to uh, to go ahead here and uh, and go ahead and, and finishing up. That spoon that was not the prettiest spoon that I that I created. And again, work holding is another is another conversation. But this is a pretty pretty good way to um, to do that. Two questions in. We have the CNC handbook that has been taken care of. If you want to get that, Luke, this is how you machine the two sides. This is an easy way to do it.